Knights of the Old Republic 1 is considered to be one of the best RPGs ever made, not only just by fans, but critically too. But within the narrative of Knights of the Old Republic 1 is a very simple, quintessential hero's journey. This is very much in line with traditional Star Wars storytelling, and from beginning to end you can see this within the call to adventure and things such as the revelation, and it's all capped off with an incredible plot twist that made the first game utterly memorable and completely beloved. This beloved nature then in itself extends to the character of Revan. If you go through the Star Wars fandom, you will find so many people who say that Revan is one of, or if not their favourite character, of all time within the Star Wars universe. However, Knights of the Old Republic 1 doesn't actually establish Revan as a character. Everything within the game is a projection of you, the player. Of course, there is a backstory and there is a setup and an idea of who Revan is, but the Revan established throughout those 30 hours of playtime is essentially the projection that you choose Revan to be. As you play through the game, you're impacting the wider galaxy on a scale that is simply unprecedented. Even though Revan as a character is a projection of you, the player, you impact the galaxy directly with every single action that you make. From the moment that you step on Taris, its fate is sealed and it gets destroyed. From the moment you are trained to become a Jedi Knight, you've essentially doomed Dantooine. When you step onto Korriban and enter the Academy, its future becomes established just as Kashyyyk and the Wookiees' fates are in your hands. The only real planet that Revan doesn't impact on a wider scale is Tatooine. And the truth is, as much as you can like Knights of the Old Republic 1, that game is not what makes the story of Knights of the Old Republic stand out. That accolade goes to Knights of the Old Republic 2. Knights of the Old Republic 2 takes everything that Knights of the Old Republic 1 established from a player perspective and adds consequence. It adds motivation. It adds so much more and without it Knights of the Old Republic 1 just doesn't achieve its greatness on a thematical and narrative level. The irony is that KOTOR 2 isn't a hero's journey like its predecessor. Unlike traditional Star Wars storytelling as I mentioned, KOTOR 2 kind of flips this on his head and actually presents a story within the heroine's journey narrative. I'll go into more detail in a future video about what the heroine's journey really is, but that's all you need to know, it is a heroine's journey. I also think this was recognised when the Jedi Exile was canonically made female. If we take a step back for a moment and go back to Revan as a character, he is fleshed out even though he's not directly in the game. Everything has been impacted in some way by him. Just how you played as him in the first game and you impacted everything that you did, you are now discovering the consequences of not only your impact as a player in the first game, but as an impact on the character you were playing. Revan's not only fleshed out, he's broadened to the point where he becomes more than a character, he becomes a philosophical ideal. When he's presented in KOTOR 2, he completely breaks the hero's archetype that he establishes himself as in KOTOR 1 and becomes something so much more. Revan in KOTOR 2 becomes a martyr, he becomes an ideal. You see Revan through the lens of so many different people within KOTOR 2 that slowly builds up this view of a character that you never actually got to meet in the first game. This is why I sometimes find it a little bit confusing when people say that KOTOR 1 is their favourite game and Revan is their favourite character because Revan wasn't established as a character in KOTOR 1, he was established in KOTOR 2, but regardless. This is where KOTOR 2 brings in the heroine's journey and does something completely different to most Star Wars stories. Not only does it present Revan as something so much grander than you actually realise, but it flips how you play the character of the Jedi Exile. Unlike Revan in the first game, you're not going through the galaxy, impacting it in a way that's going to cause mass scale consequence. You actually go through the game experiencing the echoes left behind. Of course, within the game there are certain things that you do that do have impact, but that isn't the main narrative drive. The main narrative drive of KOTOR 2 is for you to truly see what the Force does to the universe on a human level. From the moment you arrive on Telos, you're experiencing the devastation of Revan's bombardment of the planet, or you could say Malek's. When you step foot on Nar Shaddaa, the first thing you experience is the suffering and the neglect of those that were just caught up in Revan's war. In almost every instance of KOTOR 2, you're experiencing the consequence of Revan's actions while the game is also rooting Revan further as a character and trying to show you that Revan isn't just black and white, he isn't just a hero as the first game wants to suggest canonically. Additionally, unlike the first game where you're impacting the galaxy, 
In the second game, you're actually healing it. You're not causing wide-scale chaos or wide-scale repercussion. If you actually look at the meat and bones of KOTOR 2, you're just helping people on a smaller level. Whether you're helping the refugees on Nashadar or helping the residents of Kunda recover from the destruction of Dantooine, every little thing you do within Knights of the Old Republic 2 is an act of healing. So now we move on to the era of the Old Republic, and this is where my problem lies with it. I want to say initially I don't dislike the Old Republic, and I'm not here to bash the MMO. There are many things about the Old Republic that I adore, but its connection to the original franchise is not one of them. If you love the MMO, good for you. I enjoy it too, I've put many hours into that game. What I'm trying to explain in this video is how the Old Republic, and more explicitly the Revan novel, butchers everything that Knights of the Old Republic tries to present from the Jedi Exile's perspective. First and foremost, Revan's character arc within the Old Republic itself isn't actually the problem. While a lot of people were upset that Revan was kind of shoehorned into the game and made to turn to the dark side, it kind of thematically makes sense. Revan was a character that was always teetering on the edge of the light and dark sides of the Force for the necessity of a wider purpose, and the whole concept of his literal psyche splitting because of this is actually quite interesting. I just think the ultimate execution wasn't done as well as it could have been. Another issue that people like to bring up is the concept of Revan being forcibly turned to the dark side, which kind of goes against the KOTOR 2's narrative of Revan sacrificed, but it doesn't actually change much. The whole concept of Revan's fall being a sacrifice is still in place within the Old Republic. It's just that the Emperor is kind of slithered into the cracks to allow the Emperor's narrative to also fit within the grander story. The real disgrace of the Old Republic is its treatment of the Jedi Exile. Now there is one thing that is good that came out of the Old Republic and Knights of the Old Republic 2, and that was the canonization of a female Mitra Surik. But that's it. Everything beyond her gender classification and her name is utterly degraded and almost bastardized to give Revan more prominence, and the irony of this is that Revan is the character he is because of the Jedi Exile's story and journey. Now of course the Revan novel is explicitly designed to be from Revan's perspective. It is to fill in the gap between Knights of the Old Republic 1 and eventually the end of Knights of the Old Republic 2. But the problem I find with this is that the Revan novel and everything in the Old Republic is treated as a sequel to Knights of the Old Republic 1, when in truth they're sequels to Knights of the Old Republic 2. The Knights of the Old Republic story has been made to be Revan's story. But the truth is, if you really look at it, Knights of the Old Republic is driven by dual protagonists, those being Revan and the Jedi Exile. Because of this forced perspective on just Revan, the Jedi Exile is not treated as the protagonist that she really is. She's just treated as a plot device to allow Revan to become the only protagonist. This book takes away all of the agency that makes the Jedi Exile the Jedi Exile of Knights of the Old Republic 2. KOTOR 2 explicitly builds up the character of the Exile as a leader just as Revan. The Exile leads through forming bonds and through her genuine humanity. In this book, this is completely taken away. The Jedi Exile becomes a loyal dog that follows Revan around just because he's Revan. There could have been so much development between the connection between the dual protagonists of Knights of the Old Republic, but it foregoes that just to make Revan look cool. Not only is Mitra's power taken away from her in a physical sense when it comes to her skills and her force abilities, it's also taken away from her in a thematical sense too. Revan is the leader, Revan is the powerful one, Revan is the hero, and just like in the Mandalorian Wars, Mitra was just a follower of this man. So not only has Mitra been underhanded, not only has she been underpowered and turned into a character that is completely out of sync with what's established in the game, she's eventually just turned into some kind of shock factor for the plot. Killing off the Jedi Exile in this book is literally symbolism for killing your dual protagonist. It is symbolism to suggest that her story and that she is not necessary. And as I mentioned before, the irony of this is that there is no Revan as a fundamental character that isn't just a player projection without the story of KOTOR 2 and without the Jedi Exile. So to underhand the Jedi Exile as a character in favour of making Revan something more than her, when they're actually equals as opposites, one being the heart of the Force and the other being a dead spot in the Force, is as I mentioned, degradation. From there on, within the entire Old Republic continuity, 
The Exile is treated as almost nothing, she's irrelevant, while Revan is treated as this incredible, history-spanning character. In the game, Revan's mask is lauded as an item of historical significance. There's entire storylines that were directly impacted by Revan's actions in the first game, such as Taris, the Starforge, the Infinite Engine, the entire Revanite subplot, even the face of the franchise, Satil Shan, she's a homage to Revan. But Revan is only this character that people see him as because of KOTOR 2 and the Jedi Exile. So where is the homage to the Jedi Exile? The entire Jedi Order in the Old Republic has been built on the foundations of the Jedi Exile's teachings, but there's not a single reference of it. There are no subplots within the game that stem from what she achieved in KOTOR 2. Where's the references to the Lost Jedi that rebuilt the Order? And then of course, she shoehorned in as a force ghost to once again be a plot device for Revan's expansions, the Shadow of Revan, Revan's flashpoints, while having absolutely no impact in any of them. And she even appears at the end of the entire Emperor's story arc as a ghost who just does nothing. And then eventually, you have a character who is just as, if not more important, than Revan, and yet she's kind of treated as a footnote. To quote Darth Malak himself at the end of the book, as the darkness took her in her final moments, she became nothing to history. Whether you like Knights of the Old Republic 2 as a game or not, it doesn't really matter. You can prefer Knights of the Old Republic 1 as a game. Knights of the Old Republic 1 is probably a better game fundamentally, it's a more complete game, but what cannot be understated is the importance of Knights of the Old Republic 2's thematics and its narrative when it comes to providing the necessary story-wide exposition that makes KOTOR 1 more appreciated than it should be. And that is why when I see Revan as the face of the franchise, I'm kind of disappointed and I'm saddened because he is merely one half of a wider whole that is the beautiful story of Knights of the Old Republic and everything that surrounds it. This video is a little bit different for me. I'm used to creating long scripts, doing lots of research and editing and chopping things to create the narrative that I'm trying to portray. But this video is me just rambling on about something that mattered to me. I want to try and bring you videos a little bit quicker than usual. And to do that, I'm gonna need to break my usual long-winded workflow. So that just means kind of talking off the top of my head. So I'd really appreciate it if you left a comment below about your experience with this video, what you think I could do better and the things that you enjoyed. I would greatly appreciate the feedback. Also, for you that are still here at the end, there is something else I'd like to address quickly regarding notifications on the channel. If you are a current subscriber or somebody who is intending to subscribe and you haven't hit the notification bell, I advise you do that now because over 70% that's right, 70% of my subscriber base are not receiving notifications for my content, which is extremely disheartening as a creator, and I want to try and change that if I can. And also, if you're interested, come and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and join the Discord server, because I would love to have you there. All links are in the description below. I'll see you guys in the next video. But until then, may the Force be with you. Always.